Mice Twice by Joseph Lowe. Mice Twice. Cat was thinking about supper. He thought, "I could eat forty-seven grasshoppers, or I could eat sixty-nine crickets, or I could eat a fine fat sparrow." But what I think I'd really like is a nice tender mouse. So he went and sat outside Mouse's door. "Are you there, Mouse?" he asked. And in good health, I hope. Mouse lay sung in her nest behind the door. The door was too small for Cat to get through. Never better, she said. Cat turned. He roughed voice to make it smooth. He said, "Such a lovely day. I was just thinking how nice to have a friend for supper." I don't hope you can join me this evening," Mouse knew Cat well, and all his cunning ways. May I bring a friend? She asked. Much twice," thought Cat, licking his whiskers. "By all means," he said. "Shall we say six o'clock? Six will be fine," said Mouse. At six that evening, she knocked on Cat's door. Cat's stomach rumbled. "Come in, come in," he said. But when he opened the door, he saw that Mouse's friend was not another mouse. It was a dog. Dog was grinning. He was twice as big as Cat. Cat was angry, but he was afraid to show it. He waved them into the house. On the table were. Two small bits of cheese. Such a warm day," said Cat. "I found it best not to eat on warm days, but do help yourselves." So Mouse took one piece of cheese, and Dog took another. When he had swallowed his, Dog said, "I have seldom enjoyed." A chase so much. It is Swiss, or、oh, is it French? Asked Mouse. French said Cat. A gift from my cousin Pierre. Actually, it was common old rat trap cheese, as Dog and Mouse knew very well. Dog said, "It has been so pleasant, dear Cat. I hope you will have dinner." With me tomorrow night, Cat thought for a moment. I will, indeed, he said. If I may bring a friend, good company makes for good eating, said Dog. Bring any friend you like. Shall we say seven o'clock? Seven will be fine, said Cat. At seven the next night, Cat knocked on Dog's door. Beside him stood Wolf, twice as big as Dog, four times as fierce. Come in, come in, called Dog. Cat looked at Wolf. He whispered, "Dog for you, mouse for me." I read. Wolf said nothing, but he curled his lip and a horrid smile. All his sharp teeth was showing. Cat and Wolf. Both licked their whiskers, but the but when the door opened, there beside Dog sat Crocodile. His big toothy jaws slowed open and closed as he smiled at Cat and Wolf. Cat and Wolf stared at that gappy mouth, so big, so red, so many many teeth. They could not take their eyes away, not even to look at the four pieces of cheese on the table. Um," said Wolf, looking over his shoulders at the door. "Actually," said Cat, "we came to ask if we might make it another night. Neither of us is feeling well." "What a pity," said Dog. 
I had so hoped you might enjoy this delectable French cheese. Bray, it is cold. And it really was French bread. Another time, mumbled Cat as he and Wolf backed out the door. Cat thought for a moment, looking back at Crocodile. Tomorrow night, he said, I'd like you to meet a distant relative who will be visiting me for dinner. Can you join me and bring your friend? Delighted, said Dog. But not Crocky here. He must go back to the river tonight. Perhaps a mouse might come, if that is agreeable. Splendid, said Cat, trying not to grin. I will expect you at eight o'clock. At eight o'clock the next m evening, Dog and Mouse knocked on Cat's door. Inside sat the Lion, so big he all but filled the house. Cat had to sit between his huge paws. Cat was smiling, and the space remaining at one side was a table. It was covered with dishes of good things Cat had brought to please Lion. There was fresh to roasted peanuts, fat juicy raisins, little cakes covered with sugar frostings, bits of frayed and crumbled bacon and a silver tray of minute candies. Cat looked up and whispered to Lion, When the door opens, I will grab a mouse, you grab a dog. And that will be that. That, rumbled Lion, licking his whiskers with his rough red tongue. How meant you are! Come in, come in! cried the cat to dog. As the door swung open, both cat and lion leaned forward, their mouth already open. Neither of them had noticed that dog and mouse had brought their good friend, Wasp. Quick as a wink, Wasp stung lion's nose, hit then his ears, then his rough red tongue. Lion was frantic. He tried to back away, but Cat's house was too tight around him. Wasp stung his lips. Lion broke the house apart and ran. Cat ran after him and Dog after Cat. Cat's house was wrecked, but the table was unhanged. All the good things on it stood as there had been. Good friend, mm, said Mouse to Wasp, to help yourself to anything you fancy. Those little cakes, perhaps? Or one of those mints? I rather like the small of those peanuts. Myself, for stars, plenty here the, for both of us, and a good share, too. For dog, if Cat escapes what he deserves. If Cat did escape, you may be sure he never bothered Mouse again. The end of the book, Mice Twice by Joseph Lowe.